Good morning. I am Devasena. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about geostationary orbit and geostationary satellites. This topic is present in the subject satellite communication. Geostationary orbit. A geostationary orbit is also referred to as a geosynchronous equatorial orbit that is GEO is a circular geosynchronous orbit 35,786 km in altitude above Earth's equator and following the direction of Earth's rotation. Satellites in geostationary orbit is represented here. Geostationary satellites. Geostationary or geosynchronous satellites orbits the Earth around the equator in a circular pattern with an angular velocity equal to that of Earth. Geostationary satellite travels in the same direction as the Earth's rotation. Since the satellite revolves in exact synchronization with the Earth's rotation, it appears fixed or stationary to an observer on Earth. Satellites are called as geostationary or geosynchronous satellites. Geostationary satellite remains apparently fixed. That is, satellite is continuously visible from a point on Earth. Therefore, no special tracking antenna and associated circuitry is required. The fixed antenna pointed towards the satellite can be used. Hence, keeping track of a geostationary satellite is relatively easy. Let us see the effect of Doppler shift. The effect of Doppler shift of frequency is negligible. Doppler shift in frequency results due to change in relative movement between source and receiver. Angular velocity of geostationary satellite. For a geostationary satellite, the angular velocity v is given by v is equal to square root of g divided by r plus h, where r is the average radius of the earth that is equal to 6731 km. g is the gravitational acceleration that is value is equal to 9.81 meter per second. And H is the height of the satellite above the ground. Let us see the definition solar day. A solar day is defined as the time between the successive passage of the sun over a local meridian. Earth revolves more than 360 degree for successive passage of the sun over a point as earth itself travels further 0.986 degree per day around the sun. Sidereal day. Yeah, sidereal day is defined as the time required for the earth to travel 360 degree around its axis. The sidereal day is less than solar day. The sidereal is of 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4.1 seconds. A geostationary satellite must have an orbital period of one sidereal day in order to appear to the observer on Earth. Sidereal 
day and the solar day representation. This is sidereal ray. The solar day is 1 degree additional to that sidereal day. Advantages of geostationary satellites. Keeping track of geostationary satellite is relatively easy as the satellite remains almost stationary in respect to a given earth station. The relative positions of satellite and the earth station are fixed. Hence, continuous communication is possible by one satellite only. There is no need to switch from one satellite to another. There is no break in communication as only one satellite is to track. The coverage area on the earth is very large because the height of the satellite is more. Very small energy storage is required as at very high altitude of satellite. It is coming high intensity solar radiations most of the time. The effect of Doppler shift frequency is negligible. Disadvantages of geostationary satellite. Because of higher altitude of satellite, the propagation time for signal is much longer. Signal has to travel longer distance, so greater path loss and attenuation takes place. Therefore, highly sensitive receivers are required. There is practical inability to service a satellite in geosynchronous orbit and replace consumables such as solar battery cells and degraded components. Satellite launching mechanism must be powerful and most accurate. Applications of geostationary satellites. Most communication satellites today are geostationary satellites. Various application specific areas of geostationary satellites are discussed below. First application is in television broadcasting. Second is regional, national and international global communications. Third application is telephone and data circuits. Fourth one is mobile telephone services and military applications. Last is private networks for corporations and government agencies. Thank you very much for listening this lecture. If you like this lecture means kindly share this video to your friends. For further updates kindly subscribe my channel. Thank you.